This is the biggest spider I've ever seen, and she is not happy. But I've been working up to this for a long time. It's time to hold a giant spider in my bare hand. I work with my fair share of spiders. You'd think that after working with venomous recluse and widow spiders, that a non-medically significant fishing spider would be a walk in the park. But this might be my biggest challenge yet. With a leg span reaching up to six inches, the fishing spider is one of the largest true spiders in North America and it makes its home in woodland streams, just like this one. So what I'm basically looking for is a decent sized shadow on one of these little elephant ears. Last year I found a bunch of them just hanging out on top of these right in here. Um, so I'm hoping that those giant spider genetics are still in the gene pool out here and that at least a decent sized or massive one is out here. Here's a little one. I would say, eh, this is a pretty, medium sized one. Looks like it's got a wasp. Have a look at that. So as you can tell, this spider is no threat to me. Uh, this is a female actually. So she's actually chilling, just sitting here munching on this little yellow jacket. This is by no means anywhere close to the biggest spider I've ever seen. You can actually see, I'm gonna carefully, I don't want her to jump off and disappear. But you can see, yeah, this is a big spider compared to my hand, but I've seen, oh, you're all right, you're all right. I've seen way, way bigger out here. And I'm really hoping, I saw a couple of decent sized ones this spring. I'm hoping by now that they've grown and become massive. Now, the one I saw actually hangs out a little bit over there. So hopefully with any luck, she's actually somewhere around and I can catch her. But this, this is a good sign. It tells us we're on the right track and that the fishing spiders are still out here. Most of the time I see them uh, hanging out on these elephant ear plants with their legs splayed out just like this. Tiny little hairs on their legs sense every single vibration in their environment. And if a single insect lands on that leaf, vibrations go through the surface of that plant just like a spider web. And that spider can pick up exactly what direction it's coming from and how far. The reason they're called fishing spiders is they can do this exact same thing, but on the surface of the water. Because of their flat body plan, they can actually distribute their weight so much that the surface tension of the water keeps them afloat. And that same technique with the vibrations, they can sense everything going on on the surface of the water and below them. Holy crap. I just saw, I just saw a movement right here. And look, look at that spider. That is, actually, you know what? That one is bigger than it looks. At first, that's pretty big. Let's see my hand next to it. Yeah, it's a pretty big spider. Look at you. That is nuts. Now, my goal is to try and coax her down into the jar here. Carefully now, carefully. Carefully now, there we go. Go on in. Go on in, there we go. Get that leaf out of there. All right. That spider is not happy with me. Look at the size of that thing, that is insane. I have uh, never actually free handled a fishing spider of this size. And you're missing a leg. Are you the same one as last year? I haven't handled a spider this big before, so um, let's see what, see what this is like. This spider is a pretty big deal for me, and that's because it's actually a really important milestone for me and for this channel. The fishing spider, believe it or not, is one of the biggest reasons why this channel exists in the first place, actually. I grew up working with wildlife, you know, mostly insects, but there actually is a little dark period in there. There's a, there's a dark period between like eight and 12 where, um, you know, wildlife, I didn't really do openly. I actually did it more, more secretly. And that's because uh, the neighborhood I grew up, it wasn't really the normal thing to be interested in grasshoppers and praying mantises. And as a result of that, I was kind of the freak. So I, I learned to kind of keep wildlife on the back burner. And for a long time, I really didn't think that I'd get back into it until one day. And I remember we were clearing out old junk from previous owners of our house in our cellar. And I saw this big um, Halloween decoration on the wall or what I thought was a Halloween decoration. It looked like, you know, one of those plastic spiders that you hang up to like scare somebody. And I'm going over to investigate and then it moved. I did something that would change 
the course of my life forever. I went upstairs, grabbed an old fish tank, and I caught it. And I remember watching this thing move, the way that it creeped along, um, and thinking that this might be the strangest thing I ever saw. That single fishing spider was enough to get me to think, if something like this is living out here, what else is out there? And ever since then, I've spent every, every decent weather day out here mucking around in the creek looking for all kinds of crazy creatures so so today today i want to handle this fishing spider in my bare hand one to silence my fear once and for all and two to complete the circle that that kid in 2012 started all right now this is technically called a banded fishing spider but i don't really see the bands usually it has a big old spot right in the back of its cephalothorax so i usually call these a spotted but these guys are huge, creepy, creepy spiders. Now, most people will be seeing, most people will not be seeing this species right by their house. Uh, generally, I find the white banded and the dark fishing spiders closer to the house. And that's where people usually see these guys and they're like a massive spider and they freak out. But this is gonna have the same temperament as one of those types of spiders, generally similar diet and behavior. So. If this guy is no threat to me, you can guarantee that your dark fishing spiders and your white bandits are no threat to you either. Now, of course, I see a lot of people cringing right now because this is not something that most people would normally do. But what I like to do for spiders like this and wolf spiders is I will tip the jar upside down like this onto my hand and give the spider a second to kind of get calm. Spiders like these guys and the wolfies, very jumpy, very speedy, fast spiders and i'm actually more worried about this spider escaping and getting where i can't recover it than i am about it biting me reason being all right see the spider is so big that it actually can climb back into the jar which is kind of funny <laughs> i can see oh i can see so many people are just being like you're absolutely insane it's okay it's okay all right all right calm down no, she really does not want to be on the hand. I've used sticks for these guys before. They usually don't like to be on the hand. But I'm trying to be as careful as possible. I'm trying to get you. There you go. There you go. There you go. And just like that. Giant spider on my hand. I gotta be careful not to aggravate her too, too much. Notice my speaking got a little bit quieter. Because the whole idea here is to keep this interaction as calm as possible. This spider has wants absolutely nothing to do with me. More likely, if I were to make too much noise or too many freak, uh, freakish movements, she's going to launch herself and run that way. Or possibly even do a U-turn and run straight to the creek right over there. These guys are not technically aquatic, but they are able to hold their own on the water They're very good swimmers now take a look at the fangs on this spider really quick oh, she's actually calming down really nicely take a look at the fangs on this spider this is the biggest reason besides their size that a spider like this would freak so many people out because fangs like that look like they would deliver one heck of a bite and that's true this, these guys are pretty potent uh, they're known to take down vertebrates in the creek they'll be eating frogs tadpoles and fish that they can find underneath the surface of the water in the stream look at that look at that gorgeous fishing spider right on my hand absolutely beautiful and this goes to show this is not an animal that wants to attack you and i don't recommend any of you go out and handle spiders just in case you misidentify them these guys actually do look a lot like the wandering spiders out in central america now it took me a long time to get to a point where this is something that i'm okay with having a spider this size just sitting on my hand but it go but really the truth is most animals in nature do not do not want to attack you you know people vilify things because they're scary looking because they're venomous because they can bite but here's the thing you know you have defenses too like when you're out in public you know people can hit pretty hard if you're punching right but 
you're, you're probably not afraid of other people going up and punching you for no reason. It's the same thing, you know, this spider is not gonna bite me for no reason. You know, this, this, little, this little girl is sitting on my hand, absolutely chilling. I'm not putting extra pressure on her. I'm not talking too loud. I'm not breathing on her or causing any excess threat. And as a result, she is literally completely stationary, just chilling, just hanging out. As far as she's concerned, I'm their leaf, I'm another branch or something out in the environment. Those legs splayed out like that, looking for vibrations. Honestly, if a little fly or something landed on me, she might grab it and eat it because she might be, com she's completely calm right now. This is not a spider who feels threatened. And as a result, I'm completely safe. What's so funny is that an encounter like this would have made me super nervous just a year ago. And now I'm looking at this spider like, hmm, day in the life. I think it's time to bring her back to her spot. So let's walk her on over. Little butterfly. And release her right back where we found her. Here we are. I'll see you around. All right, you know that area. You know that spot. As the spider returned to its web, I couldn't help but marvel once again at the way this creature moved. Such a force of nature. Truly, they may look frightening, but the fishing spider is no more dangerous than any other creepy crawly animal if treated with respect. If you want to see another giant spider encounter, check out this tarantula documentary I shot down in Louisiana. Stay curious, and I'll see you there.